Does being beautiful matter? In the first document design video, we talked about typography, lists, organization, a little bit about white space. But I wanted to get into it in a little bit more detail because our next assignment is actually one that requires a little bit more detail. So let's talk about document design from a graphics design perspective. If you haven't watched 11 Visual Hierarchy Principles, go ahead and watch it before you finish this video because whatever I'm talking about is building on what this nice gentleman with the beard was discussing. I thought about doing my own, but once I found this video, he's a professional in the field. You need to hear from professionals in the field, and he does a better job than I could do anyway. You're used to, in your other classes, doing straight ahead manuscripts. That's why you double space stuff and put the one inch margins when you write an academic paper because it gives their teacher space to write comments in the margins and in between the lines and circle stuff. Everything we're doing in here has this extra focus on does it look good? And it's a hard thing to wrap your head around that part of writing is to make it look pretty but so you'd be shocked at just how many students end up asking me do looks really matter well in order to get your information across the person who's reading it needs to want to engage with your information so question which one would you rather cuddle with i'm sure the one on the left is a nice little kitten Probably has a great personality, but yeah, you're going for the little ginger cat on the right. Another question. You think looks don't matter? Who would you rather spend a fun evening uh, with? I'm sorry, but Ewan McGregor is one of the prettiest people in the face of the world, and the fact that he's talented as well just kind of disturbs me beyond belief. Looking good uh, does have a real difference here. If something is attractive, we'll be drawn to it and spend more time with it. This is an actual web page which exists out in the wild. It generally tends to be on almost every list of bad web page design that I've seen. And how do we count the ways this is horrible? It's overloaded. I have no idea where to look for anything. There's none of that negative space that uh, the person in the last video was talking about. They might have good prices. I don't know uh, prices from wherever this is from. Sweden, I think, Norway, whatever. But it just gives you a headache when you stare at it. What do you do? Where do you go? Uh! Compare it to Medium. Medium is an online journal which does great stuff. You look at this page and you immediately know where they want you to start. Dead in the center, they give the brief overview. You've got the very clear navigation menu up top. Then you have today's top stories, picture, text, visually appropriate. This document makes us want to go through it, where the previous one makes us want to go bash our head against the wall. So when you're thinking in terms of graphic design with your documents, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the reader to enter your information. And that's why you want it to look good, so they'll give you a chance. Document design, and, and from the graphic design end, means keeping a really tight focus on where you want the readers to go. You can't overwhelm somebody, because if you overwhelm them with lots of stuff, they're not going to have an idea as to where to start. 
you want a clear message. You want a clear path for them to go. Do you want them to go all over the place? Do you want them to hunt or do you want them to go straight through to the important information? Straight through, obviously. Now, why would you make it more complex than that? Well, sometimes people are going to be dealing with very complex subjects, but the goal here is still to make it as simple as humanly possible. You want to make it as easy to digest as possible because as a writer, you're a communicator. You want to make something that's this complex seem this clear. And it's not an easy task. It's one of the hardest bits about representation at all. Simple is hard. Doing something minimally means that you have to do it very well. So you want focus. You want simplicity and a clear direction. You want to present some level of organization. Someone tells you you need to find something on their desk. Which one would you rather go into? Yeah, I know what you're saying. The one on the left has a whole lot more stuff on it than the one on the right, but you just know that some of the stuff on that overwhelmed, cramped desk is stuff that's not needed anymore. Organization doesn't just mean getting uh, rid of everything, though. Alignment is important, and this should go back to the last video. The one on the left has more information spaces than the one on the right here but it's orderly, so it's going to be a lot easier for us to read. We know where we're going. Simple things, like direction, can make the reader's job very easy. Check out the form on the left as opposed to the form on the right. One column from top down. This one, you're going all over the place. Why would this place only ask you for your first name and not your last name? Why have a pull-down menu which makes you go to a different step when you can just have them hit a button? Even stuff which is from design companies sometimes forgets this. I found this flowchart of project documentation. And you know the problem here? Why are they going from right to left? Does that make any sense to you? I know you start looking over at the left, and then you have to go all the way to the right, and then work your way back over. Uh, no, you don't want to do that. So how you get through the stuff, simple paths. Sometimes guiding the reader through your material is largely dependent on just simple choices you make, like what colors you use. Good contrast versus bad contrast. The real difference here is white stands out against this purple background, whereas this blue does not. White does not stand out against the gray background, at least nowhere near as much as the black does. You want as big of a contrast difference as possible because I want to be able to find the information as soon as possible. Picking colors willy-nilly won't do it. You could learn a lot about color theory, and if you get any deeper into this, I suggest you would, but there are tons of places that can give you prearranged color palettes. Do a search for color palette, and you're going to run into a bunch of these. You can see that each of these has their own approach. If you want something very bright and lively, sweet here would work. Gelato is cool and relaxed because there isn't anything that's ultra bright knocking your eyeballs out. Coolers is a great one because it will randomly generate color schemes for you. You might need to hit it a few times to find the particular color palette you're looking for, but the colors will help you uh, create a mood which will help walk your reader through the stuff. This, this is very cool. If you want to get someone calm, relaxed, and orderly through it, this is a great color palette for it. If you want someone something amped up, you're probably going to kind of keep looking. So when you're Thinking in terms of graphic design, those 11 uh, tips from the previous video are all really important. But the details that I want you to think about as your job is to create focus, is to create direction, 
is to make life as easy as possible for the reader to get the information. When document design is done really good, it's something that we don't necessarily have to stop and think about. We just plow through the information without thinking about it. When document design is bad, that's when we really notice it. So develop your skills. Try to get something where everything just works and they don't have to notice that, hey, you picked the perfect color palette. Document design is one of those things that you get better at it through practice. So don't be afraid to delve in and start messing with stuff. I use GIMP as my image editor and it's because I can't afford Photoshop, but GIMP is more powerful than I'll ever need. And I admit, I never took a course or looked at instructions. I just went in and started messing with stuff. And I've gotten to be okay at it. If you get in a position where you need to do more graphic design, you might need to uh, have access to greater, greater visual design programs. And there's tons of good open source options out there that can get you just as close as you'll ever need to the real thing. Give them a try. See you next video.